I'm Jordan with AIM, and I'm here to show you the functions, features, and how to use a Smarty Cam. Let's see what's in the box. First, you'll see the Smarty Cam with its LCD screen and three function buttons. On the front, you'll see a 67 degree or an 84 degree lens with an infrared filter. On the back, you'll see two connectors. The left connector is for external power or CAN bus connection. The right connector is for your external GPS module. Behind the door, you'll see your USB connector that connects it to the PC and a slot for your micro SD card, which is where you'll store all your videos. Also in the box, you'll find your GPS module, you'll find a charger, you'll find your CAN bus or external power connector, you'll see the cable to connect USB to the PC, you'll find your micro SD card. Also in the box, you'll see a quick start guide, two user manuals, and of course a software CD. And that's all that's in the box. Now let's see how to create a gauge overlay and transmit it to SmartyCam. First, you're going to want to turn SmartyCam on and have it connected to your PC. And of course, launch Smarty Manager software. When you launch it, you'll notice there's several selections of different gauge packages you can have. But for our test here, we're going to use set eight. And we're going to go ahead and load a team logo and a track map along with several gauges. And let's start with RPM, speed, gear and throttle, lap number and lap time, and let's use an acceleration diagram as well. Once you've positioned them on the screen, you're gonna have to go ahead and set what you want your measure units to be. For example, you want it either metric or standard. Once you have everything positioned just the way you like, you have to go ahead and transmit it to the camera. And you'll find that up here. It says Smarty Cam Transmit and Receive. Just go ahead and press that button. Now we're gonna transmit track maps and start finish coordinates. It's really simple. Just press the back button, locate the button that says tracks and press it. And you'll notice on the left side of the screen, you'll see a large database of tracks already in Smarty Manager. Just go ahead and check off the tracks that you normally drive at and press the button send to Smarty Cam. Once they're sent, it's done. Smarty Cam will automatically know where you are based on GPS coordinates. Now let's look at the main features of the camera. When you switch it on, you'll see the overlay you created on the display. You'll also see the record button, which if you press it, the camera will record. You'll see the off button, which if you press that, the camera will turn off, and the menu button. Select menu and go to the GPS status screen. That shows you how many satellites you're connected to and their signal strength. We'll exit out of that, and we'll scroll down to lap management. When you select lap management, you'll see your current coordinates and can manually fix the start finish line to calculate lap times. This is really useful when you're at a track that's not in the track list. Now we're gonna to go to settings. And in the settings, there's many functions which are explained in detail in the user manual. Most of them are pretty intuitive. I'm gonna show you a few of these now. So we're gonna select settings and we're gonna to go to video set. Video set is where you can fine tune your video settings. You can choose between closed roof vehicle, open roof vehicle, and when you select closed roof vehicle, you can go in what's called the spotlight metering setting. So I'm going to hit change here. And I can scroll through these. And I can decide where I'm going to have the main focus of the camera be. It will also help in darken up a really bright image. So I'll exit out of that. And then, of course, you have video quality settings. And there's three. There's low, normal, and high. And just be aware that when you select high video quality, it means larger video files. And you should make sure that your micro SD is large enough and has enough space left to accommodate the larger files. So I'll exit out of that. Now we're going to go down to record strategy. Record strategy, you can have Smarty Cam start recording automatically. It's hands-free. So when the car moves, it starts to record. What happens is the internal accelerometer triggers Smarty Cam to start recording. You can also select when the camera stops recording as well, from five seconds to five minutes after acceleration decreases under the selected threshold. That's a pretty neat feature. Then we can select auto power off. With auto power off, you can select how long Smarty Cam will remain on after recording has stopped. Smarty Cam will automatically switch itself off. If you want to see information coming from your engine control unit or ECU, typically RPM, gear, oil pressure, and water temperature, you have two choices. You can either use an AIM logger or an ECU bridge. Now, an ECU bridge gives direct connection between the car's ECU and the Smarty Cam. 
Now, before you start, you must configure the ECU bridge. Just like you configured your Smarty Cam, we're going to configure the ECU bridge. And we're going to do it this time with a program called Ray Studio 2. So simply connect the ECU bridge to your PC, launch Ray Studio 2, and when that loads, you'll go ahead and click System Manager, and then choose SMC Bridge. Once that opens up, you're going to go ahead now and click New for a new configuration. And now you have to choose your ECU manufacturer and some other key parameters, like reference speed and gear. And you'll do this in system configuration and in SmartyCam function settings. Now once that's done and you're happy with it, click Transmit to send that configuration to your ECU bridge. And now you can go ahead and connect the ECU bridge to your SmartyCam via the CAN cable. Once that's done, you're ready to go.